It's the oldest medicine on this planet for a reason. There's many plants out there. There's millions of plants out there. Why is this the one that persistently pops up in all the histories, all the way from the beginning of written history? Because it works for human beings, for the most annoying things, chronic things, chronic discomforts. It was called the herb of joy in Sumerian records. The Egyptians used it. The Romans used it. Opium came to China in the 8th or 9th century. The Arab traders brought it. And they're the ones who introduced opium to the world. While it had been eaten or smoked with tobacco before, opium use was transformed when an ingenious new pipe was developed in China in the early 18th century. The Chinese term you hear is Tunyan Tu. Tunyan Tu simply means to swallow clouds. Yeah, and to spew out fog. What you end up inhaling is a pure distilled vapor. It's not a burnt product. So you don't have the toxicity of all the combustion. In fact, all of the impurities are left behind. The development in Europe of an elixir called laudanum, a combination of powdered opium and alcohol, soon led people from all walks of life to seek out the soothing effects of the poppy. It was the same people who were using it in England and, and France, you know. Queen Victoria-like. Byron, Shelley, Keats, Coleridge, Jean Cocteau. Anyone who's creative knows you just need to be able to sit down calmly without any distractions including no body pain and no fatigue in your mind or your brain, and, and work. And that's what opium allows artists and musicians and writers to do. By the 1800s, 